Right, in this tutorial we're going to look at actually getting some of this stuff across to Maya. So we're going to start out with a paint layers. I've actually gone in and saved this, so I've just done a save as, where are we, save scene as. And I've saved this into uh, a folder within my actual Maya um, project folder. I'll just call this Pillar 2. What it actually does, uh, what it does is create a fo another folder as well, um, which will contain all the other bits and bobs. So we go to file and there's a couple of ways to take out the textures actually we can right click on any of the individual ones and we can export selected so we could do this and export them all individually uh, we could export channel to PSD and do it that way as well so we can do as a PSD file or we could go into file and we could say uh, export all paint layers now if we go into this I'm going to do, I'm just going to say for active model, which is the only one we're using. I'll stick with the normal file type. Um, our location, I've just set uh, within my folder. So again, within my project folder for Maya, within the images and within a folder called Mudbox. And you can see on this, this is what they're all going to be replaced with. So it's going to be replaced with our layer name. So in this case, Diffuser Specular. I'm going to have on there the dollar sign M. It's going to be replaced with the material name. The dollar sign C replaced with a channel name, dollar sign L replaced with a uh, paint layer name. So what I'm going to do, merge layers in each channel. We can actually take that off and we could save it as a PSD if we wanted to. to keep all those active, but I'm going to flatten these down. So merge layers into each channel. And we can just click on export. I would just click yes to all on this. Okay, so that's actually saved out the the paint layers. Now, um, the sculpt information we have to do in a different way. So I'm just going to go into oops, into this, uh, into our UVs and maps, and we're going to go into this extract texture maps, a new operation. Let's call this um, for the sculpt. And we can choose what maps we're going to take out. So I'm going to take out the ambient occlusion. I'm going to take out displacement. And I'm going to take out the normal map. So we just click on one, these one by one. Now my uh, mud box does a lot of this for us. So what we have here is our target model. So this is the original model at level zero added. We have the model at its highest level added. So this is our pull out mid res. And there, our high resolution meds, mesh. Um, and then we can go down to the options. So I'm going to put this on quality good. For the method, this is important. We want this to be subdivision. It's going from a higher subdivision level to a lower subdivision level. And generate one map, and I'll change this to be a 2K map. Let's set anti alias in just be two times. Uh, so the shadow map resolution at 2K. And then we just need to create a file name for this. What I'll actually do is not save over the others. So I'll call this pillar two. Okay, pillar two AO. Leave everything as it is. Click on our displacement map. All these settings should have been changed, including our method subdivision, our anti and all that. We just need to give this a file name. So again, let's call this pillar two. Call this displace. And finally, go to our normal map. Again, everything's set. Let's go into our pillar two, normal. Save. Now, all we need to do once we've got those settings done is just click on the extract button. And this is going to go through and calculate all it needs to do to extract those textures out. And this could take quite a while, depending how long or how large these um, textures are and how much detail is in them. So I will pause the video at this point. Okay, so this is done. Map extraction is finished. Just ignore this. So we can click OK on that. Wait for it to catch up. You can see on here, it looks a little bit weird. And this is because it's added the ambient occlusion to the top of our map. 
So click on this. Uh, we can click on, let's click on an overlay, for example. Just adding that on top there. Uh, we also have a butt map and anger. A normal map as well, viewing. So what we could actually do is take this down to its lowest subdivision. So we just use page down, back to our level zero. And see on that, we we'll click these two back on. That is giving the effect of both of our two uh, other maps on there. So now we can take this across to Maya. Okay, so we're back in Maya. Um, I have actually imported, well, I exported our file back from Mudbox. Because we did some of the changes in the detail itself, uh, using the grab tool, I've re-exported that out. So that was just file export um, with the pillar selected in Mudbox. And I've file imported that into Maya. So let's look at putting the textures on this. I'm just going to go to a two panel layout and in this I'm just going to save this to or change this to uh, Hypershade and where are we? Uh, two panels, Hypershade Perspective. So the one I wanted. Hiding away. Okay. I'm just going to start off with a new map. So I'm just going to type in and create a blend. What I'll do is just click in this panel and just press space just to um, zoom into this so we have more work area. So, we'll mouse drag our blend down if it's not already in. There we go. So, we can bring files in in two ways. Uh, so, with a color, let's just bring it in this way. Click on the little swatch at the side, let's choose file. Bring this over. Click on our file node and let's just go into the image and we can go and find our images. So this is going to be our diffuse. Okay, open that up. You can also just create a file node separately. Bring this out. Click on our file, image. And let's bring in the specular. And what we can do with this is just uh, take that from the out color into the specular color. And then if we just go in and uh, let's this time create another file node. This one we're going to bring in our normal map. So the normal map, I'm just going to highlight the blend material and then I'm going to middle mouse drag from our normal onto our bump channel. This brings in our bump node. Just need to make sure we go into the bump node and uh, let's use this. Yes. I think we took it out as in tangent space normals. to this. Now I can just middle mouse drag to this and let's take them onto both. There we go. And if we just press six on our keyboard, you can see our textured version of that. Okay. Do you see the slight difference in shape on this one? Not as square as the other one. There we have our images. Where my tangent space for now? Um, did I see it too far? Let's leave that as it was. So we brought in our displacement map as well. Um, 
Let's see what we can do with that. Let's go in, press space again. Again, I'm just going to bring in a file node. Bring in Apple Displace. Now, the displacement map, um, what we need to do is actually go to the shader group. In here, we have our displacement material. So what we can do is just middle mouse drag this one into our displacement map. That's our displacement node. Now this is a render time um, thing, so in fact, let's just switch this off for now. Let's just quickly go in and do a render on this. May need to just set the viewing area. Maybe okay. I'm just going to make a copy of this. And just go back. Let's disconnect this and delete this displacement. So our shading group again. Let's middle mouse drag over to our displacement map. And there. Now let's just do another render. Just taking a bit longer because we have the displacement map on there now. So if we just go between these two, so this is as it was. Uh, this is just a normal map, and this is now with a displacement map on. So you see, it starts pushing out some of the detail where we have some of that from the actual texture itself. So that's what the displacement map does. It physically pushes out the geometry. Um, to get the best out of this, you need a, more of a higher res model. So you could actually use this as part of an LOD and have a higher res model um, to, to use the displacement map on. But that's kind of how that works. Okay, so you can see that actually pushing out and we're getting more of the true shape of this on there. And even on the low res version, it is pushing out a bit. But on the higher res version, you see that's pushing out quite a bit more on there. Okay, so that is just bringing the textures in. Um, into Maya and just looking at creating the shading groups for those textures. And that's it. Thank you.